Well, how do that, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the viewer verse, as you can see over there, people, I've got No Man's Sky on. I've made myself quite a chubby looking android. Why have I made myself a chubby little android? Let's jump on over into the PC verse first, and we'll go back to that in a moment, people. So I'm over on Bolam's Art Studio. Now, a lot of Bolam's art has been fairly old. I mean, you can see here, there's there's concept art for like the Exocrafts and all sorts on sort of Bolam sort of websites. There we go, Exocrafts, looking rather splendiferous. I like the look of this one. It looks like it might be able to take to the air, or that one. Heck yes, hopefully we see more exocrafts and more in keeping with what we see on the screen here, people. But yeah, pretty darn freaking awesome epic stuff. And like I say, this was from when No Man's Sky was being concepted. But as you move into his newer bits of artwork, I mean, I say newer bits of artwork, these are still fairly old. I mean, posted six years ago. That one is called Isolation. This one here is called Disconnected, which I freaking love. Again, six years ago. But that looks like they could be sitting inside of you know, the space station or something. And there's like a VR helmet on the floor there. Very cool. But keep going. I mean, that is very Akira. You're going to see these guys. Look. Look at this guy. I don't know where I can zoom in on this guy. But you can see here he's got that big sort of shaped head. He's very much an android. Yeah, six years ago. Posted that. The long walk home. And look at that. That looks like a colossal archive. It really does. Okay, well, let's, let's carry on. So what else we've got? We've got this guy standing right here. I mean, I don't think... Can I zoom in on this? Can I go into this? Can, yes, there we go. Look. Look at him. He looks exactly like the autophage of now. I love the fact that there's waterfalls in the background as well, people. That brings me hope that we might see different water mechanics come into No Man's Sky at some stage. Heck yes. I mean, if, if Bolam's artwork is still sort of influencing the well where, where we are now, then who knows, people? You know, how do I go back? Dang it. Darn it. Blast it. Okay, there we go. And this way. Another one! Another one there! We have another little uh, robot -y dude standing there. And this looks like some sort of underground metropolis, doesn't it? With all these walkways and cities and strange stuff going on. It almost looks Japanese-y in inspiration as well, with these little lanterns and things next to it. Freaking awesome artist! Anyway, let's let's go back to his main folder, because there's, there's just so much of this inside of Bo Lam's art studio. And it, it kind of makes me think that a lot of what we're seeing coming into game now now, I mean, those there with that little robot dude in, could be influenced on what we're seeing inside of game now. I mean, there's there's some going back even before the concepting of No Man's Sky, though. I mean, look at this one. This is, this is still like got a robotic dude in it, and this was from seven years ago. So this sort of stuff has been inside of Bo Lam's freaking head, taking up space for some time. But it it's nicely puts it out onto paper. It really is freaking awesome artist. So yes, he's one of the artists that works for Hello Games. I should have said that towards the start, really, shouldn't I? But I kind of think that was kind of obvious. I mean, look at these multi-tools. Look at these multi-tools. I would love to see these multi-tools come into the freaking verse. I mean, yes, we've got something that looks like this and something that looks like that. But all these other examples, we don't got those. Pretty darn freaking swanky. These almost look like Sentinel multi-tools, don't they? Now, they brought us in two Sentinel multi-tools just the other year. Not a massive fan. Well, this year, I should say. I'm not a massive fan of the two, but I think these are a lot nicer. It's a shame they didn't go with these examples, to be honest, isn't it? Very cool. Very nice, those. Anyways, anyway, I digress. We're going off on a bit of a tangent from where I wanted to go to in the point of making this video. And the point of making this video is over inside of No Man's Sky right now, as you know, we've got two different appearances. We've got this sort of head that I'm wearing right now, which looks just like the artwork that we're seeing from Bo Lam, even like the frame and the structure. Now, there was one robotic image over on side of Bo Lam's art studio, which I don't think I showed you, actually. Yeah, let me let me show you one. <laughs> let me just show you the inspiration behind this build of this droid. So it's this piece of artwork right here. Kaboom! So there we are. Let's, let's zoom into this one if we can, people. And what I like about this one is, look, there's a person there with a cape. No helmet, but it's got, like, the head all banded. But it's definitely a No Man's Sky-esque cape. And it's holding the hands of this sort of giant mechanoid structure that I could... I mean, he's a freaking unit, isn't he? So I figured I'm going to try and make that unit of a creature inside of No Man's Sky. And look at that structure there. Again, it looks like a colossal archive. It really does, doesn't it? So it does look like they are using inspiration from Bo Lam, or at least I think they are. Do you think I'm making 
concerns with this one people do you think i'm clutching at straws go on i know that you would like to sound up inside the comments start writing your little comments now that'd be freaking awesome heck yes but yeah this is what i come up with in in sort of response to that i mean let's just go back into the appearance modifier and let's just reset the way i look there you go there's somebody else in the appearance modifier right now tinkering around with an android as well well i've got save files i'm just going to just jump to the save file there we go that'd do i've got a cape on but at the moment as you know you can't see capes inside a multiplayer but you know that, that, that's kind of cool i'm just going to go and save that i'm going to jump in my centralized ship jump out of my centralized ship and uh, yeah that's pretty much me finished with the tinkering but as you can see people i honestly do think that the artwork of yesteryear we're talking six seven years ago from Bo Lam is still influencing the game today so maybe some of that artwork of the multi-tools or perhaps even the exocrafts or even the wells with waterfalls and more majestic sort of underground cities and things might be on the cards at some point people out there inside of the viewer versus what I'm thinking that's what I'm thinking I mean it, it might not ever come to fruition you know oh I've also done some polls let's just jump back over one second let me uh let me see if I can bring up the polls that i did the other day people and uh yeah we, we'd have a quick look at those while we're here why the fudge not we might as well not really overly related but i put it here what needs the most attention in no man's sky obviously the bugs the bugs and multiplayer issues definitely need sorting but that aside because i'm hoping that's going to get done in the way of patches like they usually do so i just focused on the pure game Replay replayability and end game content 45 percent hit that up I honestly think when you're a new player coming into no man's sky it's quite daunting how big the game is and all the things that you can do but when you're a legacy player that's been playing as long as we have there's not much that's been put in at end game there's no end game content there's nothing to progress that loop or want you to go through all 250 odd galaxies to actually it, yeah there needs to be replayability for end game content people that have played all the way through the story got everything they need to get so i'm kind of in agreement there i definitely need that for myself my own sanity my own channel definitely heck yes variety of planets and fauna well that could add into that that definitely needs to happen and that's hit up 29 percent uh what was it the origins update was the last time we got any of that come into game and that was a good couple of years now uh, challenges and in-game missions and events now we have had more challenging way of new sentinel types has that really brought a challenge with it it has early game later game it's still not a big challenge for those that have s-classed everything six percent have hit that one up i kind of feel that they need to get multiplayer fixed before the missions get done but i'm hoping if they do bring in more missions it's going to be more multiplayer focused and make it easier for matchmaking starting up your own server instances perhaps give us our own mission computers on board our own freighters or something so it makes it easier to run with friends depth of all gaming elements more fun less sandbox I honestly thought it was going to go that way when it got announced for switch that's why i was kind of excited for the switch announcement but it kind of feels that the switch is going to be more standoffish than stand onish when it comes to new updates coming into the verse as we've already seen delays and we have seen that when they have had an update it's caused serious issues on switch so did they stretch the limits of their studio i think they have slightly there people it's a bit of a double-edged sword but anyway i do hope that they bring in more game mechanics into game it's like at the moment trying to get your s-class freighter oh my god you could end up falling to freaking sleep doing the whole freighter sort of reload and resaving and all that sort of stuff and reloading it'd be better if they added a game mechanic to it you know that freighter is taking damage from pirates maybe it starts off as an s class the quicker you can take out all the pirates and get on board it the bigger the chance it's got of being an s class because you've saved it from being freaking pillaged you know why the fudge not and even if you do save it when it's a c class it'd be nice if there were ways to upgrade it maybe using nanites or using some sort of mission system to slowly upgrade it to an s class like you can with your frigates okay automation pet farming and base building well at the moment yes you can have pets and yes you can have bases that have got farms for sort of like materials and things like that inside of some of the frigate missions you actually come across a diplo farmers inside of the law inside of the text but it'd be nice if we could farm our creatures and even have pet pens on say on our freighters or on bases so people can see what pets we've got inside of our menagerie i think that'd be quite cool but it would be nice if they also laid eggs and things and you could do recipes and do cooking with some of the ingredients make it feel more integral to the whole base thing and your pets thing and ownership of pets 
just flesh it out a bit. But then that's kind of adding depth to all game elements. So it all sort of ties in together, all this sort of stuff. I honestly think we need a bit of everything. And that kind of fills into the, the depth of all game elements. At the moment, there's some depth, there's some game elements that feel really, really shallow, and they just felt like placeholders. It's like settlements, you know. I could talk all day about what they could bring to settlements to enhance it. In fact, I've done videos on how they can enhance it. I'll put a video up there if you want to see how I think they could enhance settlements. Go and watch that one, Hercules. But yeah, I've, I've put out this, and I'm going to be making a video about Bo Lam's artwork and how it might be influencing the game of today. Guess what video you're watching right now? That one! That's the one you're watching! Salute Mundo, people. Oh, heck yes, and thank you for being here to watch that video. Brilliant, eh? I've also put out a massive playlist on all the times that I've mentioned the Void and how it could come into game and speculation on the Void. This is prior to all the Void Mother stuff. This That video on there, the title card, I think it's from about three years ago or two years ago. Freaking insanely a long time ago, anyway, that I've been banging that drum about the Void. Go and hit that up, give it a watch. It's kind of funny watching it back, because I was actually talking, I think that first video or the second inside the playlist, about how I think that the, the Exomech might become almost like a sentient pet and follow you around and maybe help you out. <laughs> and that came into fruition. And that was one of my speculation ideas from like two years ago. Freaking mentals. Anyhow, I've also put out another poll on which game you would like to see me do more on, because I've got a couple of unfinished playlists and games that I like to play other than No Man's Sky. And the Outer Worlds has run one on out, so I, I do want to get to at least another planet in, inside of the Outer Worlds before I put it down completely, but, you know, I might actually really enjoy it once I start sort of jumping from planet to planet. It depends on what the space sort of side is. I don't know whether there is a space side. It could just be planet side, but it'd be nice if there's a space element. We will see. We will see how we get on with that, people inside the view of us. Anyway, there's Arcade Paradise, Meet Your Maker, which got zero votes for Meet Your Maker. Death in the Water 2, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I got up to episode 10 on that. There's only three episodes left, and pretty much all three of those are encounters with the Kraken. So that's going to be intense. That's going to be crazy. I was thinking about just doing one live video and just going till I complete the game. But that could be Brown Trousers at the moment. Since I haven't played it for so long, I'm probably going to get eaten alive. And Gran Turismo 7 VR and on VR, I play that in my own spare time. I do like doing the odd VR race. I do like just walking around my cars. Sadly, I've got all the cars I want in that game, so the appeal has gone off a little, but at the same time, it is my favourite VR title. Yes, even better than No Man's Sky in VR. It's freaking amazing. I do like No Man's Sky in VR, though, but it's a tad warm to bring you content. Anyway, people, I think I've gone on long enough now. We went off on a few little mini side tangents there, but what do you think about the art of Bo Lam? Now, some of, some of my initial thoughts with the artwork of Bo Lam is perhaps some of that concept art from six, seven years ago is concept for their new IP. And when you look at some of that stuff, it does look like a fantasy game in space. And it does look like you can take off your helmet because a lot of the characters over on his website look very sort of human-esque and they haven't... Yeah, anyway. I put a link to all of his artwork inside of the video description. Go and hit in, hit that up. Have a quick little butchers around with your own eye, people, and see if you think there might be something in that. But wouldn't it be cool to have an, a fantasy sort of game, but in space? When I say a fantasy type game, think Dungeons and Dragons, Lord of the Rings, and that sort of world with dragons, like, like Game of Thrones, but in space. Being able to travel to planet to planet in spaceships and still come across magic and dragons and strange Everweldy type beasts be quite cool i think that people it hasn't been done before has it oh look there's still me on the screen there hello me on the screen anyway people i'm gonna end off take care goodbye goodbye and goodbye again